North Carolina is home to the famous Research Triangle Park, an international hub of innovation. But the Triangle, like most of the state, only has access to slow, overpriced, and semi-reliable access to the internet. For years, Time Warner Cable and other incumbent operators have tried to pass a state law to prevent communities from building their own broadband networks. But communities, like the cities of Wilson and Salisbury, own North Carolina's most advanced networks and are at risk of being shut down. Let's examine how their broadband services compare to major incumbents in North Carolina. Comparing promotional pricing is misleading, so these prices are based on published prices most subscribers pay. For similar reasons, we use prices for unbundled broadband service. We'll plot the advertised download speed on the x-axis and the advertised upload speed on the y-axis. The size of the bubble is related to the price. Bigger circles mean larger bills. Here were Time Warner Cable's tiers in the areas they have not recently upgraded, which included the Raleigh region until early 2011. Because the upload speeds are so slow, they lie among the bottom of the chart. Slow upload speeds are a killer for businesses, video chats, and many other applications on the modern internet. This is what Time Warner Cable offers in Charlotte, which has the best upgrades Time Warner Cable currently offers. Even with the upgrades, the upload speeds are much slower than the download speeds. Now let's turn to AT&T. These tiers use the older DSL that AT&T offers across most of the state. Here are the upgraded AT&T packages from their UVerse service, which is not widely available in North Carolina. They sometimes pretend it's the same thing as a full fiber optic network, but it isn't, and it cannot compete with the modern networks or full fiber systems. CenturyLink continues to rely on DSL. These last generation networks are falling further and further behind cable networks, which are cheaper to upgrade. Let's move on to the community networks. Fibrant is the fiber to the home network owned by the city of Salisbury. The most obvious difference is the higher upstream capacity because Fibrant is not constrained by the older technologies used by Time Warner Cable or CenturyLink. It delivers faster speeds at lower prices illustrated by the smaller circles. Its slowest offers far more value than the competition. The fastest tier illustrated, which is not the fastest available, offers faster speeds at lower prices than the competition. And here is Greenlight, the publicly owned fiber to the home network owned by Wilson. We only plot one point because Greenlight has a single unbundled broadband option, but Greenlight's bundled options offer more choices, all symmetrical, along the same trajectory as Fibrant. Here are all the speed tiers advertised by these providers. Greenlight and Fibrant both offer faster connections than the best upgrades any of the major incumbents offer. As an additional bonus, fiber to the home networks, including Fibrant and Greenlight, are far more consistent when it comes to actually delivering the advertised speeds. Subscribers to cable networks like Time Warner Cable and DSL like CenturyLink rarely experience the promised speeds for a variety of technological reasons as well as advertising embellishment. The question for North Carolina is whether it will continue to be an innovative hub if it embraces old technology rather than allowing communities to build the infrastructure they need to be competitive. This information comes from a report we released from the New Rules Project at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance at the end of 2010. If you are in North Carolina, or anywhere else for that matter, let your representatives know that communities should have a fair choice to build these networks.